All right, so we're starting off a little review here, and um, hopefully you have uh, paused this and done that already. So we want to graph these. That's in uh, point-slope form. So it's in point-slope form. We look at the x. We take the opposite of that. We look at the y. We take the opposite of that. We plot that point. And that's right here. And then we apply the slope, which is two-thirds, so we're going to go up two over three. So I'm going to go ahead and let you do that real fast. So we did that in the same, the other direction, down two to the left three, because it was a positive two-thirds going up, and there we go. So this next one is in slope-intercept form. So if we plug zero in for x, then y would be nine. So we have zero, nine up here. And the slope of that one is negative eight. So we're going to go down 8 over 1 and down 8 over 1 <coughs> to the right. So that's right there. And then the next one is in standard form. So in standard form, we want to find the x and the y intercept. So if we let 0, x equals 0, divide both sides by 6, y equals 9. And if we let y equal 0, uh, and then divide by 9, we get 6. So 6, 0 is right here, and uh, 0, 9 is up there. <clears throat> we can also look at the slope then. The slope, it's going down 9 over 6. So negative 9 over 6, that reduces to negative 3 over 2. So um, we could go... Uh, down 3 over 2, down 3 over 2, to get a couple more uh, points. So, there we go. And, if we look at that uh, triangle there, That's going to be that green triangle right there. So perimeter, we like to get uh, the units on that and area, unit squared. And then uh, if we want to, um, here, if we go straight to the left and straight up, we get this very narrow triangle, which has a side of 1 and a side of 8. So if we go 1 squared plus 8 squared equals c squared, it's going to be 1 plus 64. So if we square root both sides, that's going to be root 65. So that red side is root 65. Now. If we take a look at the purple side here, we go over like this and go up like this, and that's going to be 4 and uh, 6. So that's going to be 4 squared plus 6 squared, and so that would be 16 and 64, which is 80. And if we square root 80, that is going to be 80, not 80, that's 36. 6 squared, something didn't feel right about that. So 6 squared is 36. So you kind of want to keep your mind open while you're doing stuff, and, not, and then you can catch mistakes that you maybe made. So that's going to be 52, which is 4 times 13. And if you didn't notice that, you could do 2 and 26, and then you get another 2. So that's going to be 2 root 13. And then the green side there, that is 2 and 3. So that's going to be 2 squared and 3 squared. So that is going to be root 13. Okay, so we've got root 13 and we have 2 root 13. 
so we can add those together. So we've got root 65, that's not going to simplify. And we have 1 root 13 plus 2 root 13, so that's going to be 3 root 13. Okay, so the area is a little bit uh, trickier. So what we can do here is we can, you can kind of see that there's a rectangle around that triangle right now. So if we found the area of that rectangle, that would be 4 times uh, 8. 4 times 8 would be 32. And if we want to, maybe we could, uh, I don't know if this is going to be helpful, but uh, kind of trace around the uh, rectangle there that is has an area of 32. Now if we find the area of these triangles, so that's going to be 1 half of 8 times 1 for the red triangle, and then the purple triangle up here is going to be 1 half of 4 times 6, half the base times the height, and this little green triangle down here, it's going to be one half of uh, three times two. Okay, so this is going to be four, and purple one, half of four is two, that's going to be twelve, and the green one, I would take half of two is one, so that's just going to be three. So if we add this together, that looks like nineteen, so we're going to have thirty-two minus nineteen is... 13. So there's the area of the triangle, the green triangle, is going to be 13 square units. Now, um, there's another way to look at that actually because we're asked to classify the triangle. So first of all we can see that all three of these sides were different. So the word for that is scalene, all different sides. Um, now the angles you have to take a look at this. That looks like it could be a right angle or it could be a obtuse angle. Who knows? But uh, we can look at these slopes. So the slope of the green line there was... Um, I'll highlight that in blue also. So the slope of that was two-thirds and the slope of this line was negative three-halves and those are opposite reciprocals. Opposite reciprocal slope which means perpendicular, which means a right angle, which means that's a right triangle. Okay, so that's some review for us there. Um, some vocabulary here, locus. A locus is a set of points that satisfy a given condition. Okay, that's how we normally uh, define a circle, is the locus of points equidistant from a given point, which is the center, and all the points of the same distance away from that point create a circle. And so that leads us to the definition of a sphere, which is the locus of points in space at a given distance from a point, which would be the center of the sphere. So we have this point, and we take all of the points that are four centimeters away from it, and we start putting those in space, everything that's four centimeters away, we create a sphere around that center. Okay, a chord of a sphere is a segment whose endpoints are on the sphere. All right, so we have a circle. We have one point on one side and one point on the other side, and we connect those two. That's a chord, a line segment that uh, goes across a sphere. Okay. So we have two formulas here, um, and basically you just have to you have to memorize those. Um, so it's four <clears throat> four pi r squared and four thirds pi r cubed. So they both have four pi in them. Um, so they both have four pi r. Um, the volume, because it's in cube units, you can remember, since it's cubed, you're going to have an extra 3 down here. So the formulas are almost the same. This one's squared, this one's cubed, and since it's cubed, we're going to divide by 3. I mean, that's not a rule. I'm saying that's how we can remember it. Okay. All right. So find the surface area and volume. Okay, so we're just basically going to use those formulas. So um, starting off with the uh, surface area here, uh, the surface area is 4 pi r squared. 
Okay, so that's going to be uh, 16 times 4 is 64. It's also 4 cubed if you multiply it. It just, just so happens because we used 4 and this is 4. So that's going to be um, 64 pi centimeters squared. And now if we do the volume, the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so we just set r cubed is 64. So 64 times 4 is going to be 256. So that's going to be 256 pi over 3 centimeters cubed. All right. So if we do that again, um, and we look at the surface area over here. So the surface area is going to be 4 pi r squared. Okay, so 12 squared is 144, so we're going to have 144 times 4, so that's 16, that's 16 plus 1 is 17, so 576, 576 pi centimeters squared. Okay, and the volume is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. So that's going to be a bit more. Now, actually, um, I like to use a little, manipulate these numbers sometimes to make my math a little bit easier. So what I notice here, 4 thirds pi, and then if I take one of those 12s out and actually factor it, so 12 is 4 times 3, or 3 times 4, right? So I could rewrite this as, this is still 12 cubed, I just wrote one of the 12s a different way. And I did that so I could cancel out those 3's real fast. So now I have 16 times 144. 12 squared is 144, 4 times 4 is 16. So 24, 24. It's a good idea to do some stuff by hand occasionally and not always use the calculators. Um, weakens your skills. Okay, the one, uh, 13, 2,304. So, 2,000, oops, 2,300, 2,304 pi centimeters cubed. Okay. So, <clears throat> that all looks good. Now, it says when the radius triples, so if we look at that, that's times 3. Uh, it says, does the surface area triple? Well, 64 times 3 would be 192. So, um, that's not tripling. Hopefully, you can think about uh, what's happening there. You just take calculator and divide that by 64. But it goes back to, we've already compared areas, and hopefully we know that uh, when we do areas, we square the ratio. So the surface area of a sphere that's radius is tripled, the surface area will be nine times more. And hopefully, if you think about it also, uh, going from here to here, volume. So if area, the ratio gets squared, then volume, the area would be cubed. And we're going to have a lesson on that actually coming up, I think, right after this, uh, the next one. So that's 27 times larger. So the volume is massively bigger. If we triple the uh, radius, it becomes 27 times. Okay, a cross-section of a sphere is a point or a circle. So if you slice across a sphere, if you, if you, if you slice it right on the very tip of, uh, it's called tangency, it would just hit in one single point. But anywhere else that you slice through, besides just evenly sitting there, um, I have a cutie here. So if I, this, this, if you think about the cutie touching the table here, the paper, the notes, theoretically it would only be in that one tiny point in the very bottom that it would be sitting there resting. Obviously, the, this is malleable, so it squishes down a little bit. But anyway. Um, if we slice it anywhere else through there, we'll get a, well, this isn't a perfect sphere. But if it was a perfect sphere and we sliced through it, we would get a circle. Okay? Just happened to have those sitting there. It's funny. 
Okay. Um, if the cross section, the slice through, if it contains the center, then we will get what's called a great circle, which is the biggest circle that you can have inside of a sphere. And the result is the two parts you would get would be two congruent hemispheres, like the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Okay, so that's some basic information there. Um, the circumference, so the circumference of great circle of the sphere is 15.5 uh, meters. So the normal circumference formula is circumference equals 2 pi r. So that's going to be 15.5 pi equals 2 pi r. Now, I automatically started going to the formula for circumference, but I probably should have finished the question just to see what they're talking about. They're asking for the surface area of a sphere. So the surface area of a sphere, try to remember the formula, 4 pi r squared. Um, if you want to think about that, it's like four circles, because right, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So four circles will cover the surface of a sphere. Okay, so that's why I'm back over here. I need to find the radius to find the surface area. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So the pi's are going to cancel there, and we're going to get um, 7.5, 7.25. Now, I would like to think of that as 7 and a fourth. And then if I do, wait a second, 7, 5, 7.75. 7, And you got to be careful doing stuff in your head. It's easy to slip up a little bit. Okay, so that would be 28 plus 3. That would be uh, 31 over 4, actually. 31 over 4. So I'm going to plug 31 over 4 into this formula instead of the decimal because I saw 4 sitting right here, and I was like, oh, that's actually pretty nice. So um, the 31 squared we can do over here, 31. That's going to be 961, and then the 4s, that 4 is going to cancel one of those 4s. So that's going to be um, 961. Yeah. So that's going to be 961 pi, and then this is 4 squared, but then I'm multiplying by 4, so that will cancel one of those out. So that's just going to be over 4, and that's going to be meters squared. Now, usually with uh, things like that, we would probably break that down to a mixed. Um, and I guess we can do that real fast here. So 961 divided by 4 is 2, 4, uh, and 1, uh, 0, and 1 fourth, 240. Uh, oops. So you see how your mind just can move numbers around and stuff like that, so you want to be careful. So 240 and 1 4 pi would probably be a nicer way to say that. All right, usually we don't worry about switching stuff like this unless it's a word problem. Okay. So, basically, this is a word problem. They're trying to make this like a real-life you know, thing. Um, but what are they talking about? Um, estimate the leather to cover the ball. So we're talking about covering the ball. We're talking about the surface area. So, um, and again, anytime you know what you're doing, an example, try to pause it and try to do the example yourself. Um, you could pause each one of these before we start talking and read the question and see if you can do something with it. So that's going to be 4 pi r squared. Make sure that you have the radius and not the diameter. Um, so 5 squared is 25, and uh, 25 times 4 is 100. So it's 100 times pi uh, inches squared. So pi is 3.1415. So that would be uh, 314.15926. Um, so if we were going to three decimal places, we would go there, but this is more exact. I would leave it like that. Okay. 
Um, what is the radius of a sphere molded from the cylinder of the modern clay shown? Okay, so we're talking about the radius of a sphere, and we have this modeling clay as a cylinder. So if we take that and we change it to a sphere, it's still the same amount of clay. So hopefully, if you think about the amount of clay, that's going to be um, the amount of clay is going to be volume. And so if we're talking about a sphere, then the volume of the sphere um, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, but first we're going to want to come over here and find the volume of the cylinder. And then once we find the volume of the cylinder, we can plug that volume in because the volumes would be the same. It would be the same amount of clay. And then we can solve for r. Okay, so the cylinder, we'll do over here. So the volume of a cylinder, we need the height, and we need the base area, and then we multiply those together to get the volume. Remember, cones and periods are, uh, pyramids are one-third. Okay, so the height, remember, is the distance between the bases. And remember what color I was using for the bases. Uh, purple. I was using purple for the bases, so I'll do that here. Hopefully, it's, it doesn't really matter all that much. But um, So the height is the distance between the bases. So that's 16 centimeters. And the area of the base, that's a circle. It's going to be pi r squared. So that's going to be 4 pi. And then if we multiply those together, that's uh, going to be 64 pi centimeters cubed. So we can put 64 pi over here. Now we can divide both sides by pi. That's going to cancel out. And then we can multiply both sides by 3 fourths. So, or the whole thing, if you want to think about it that way. So if we multiply the whole thing by 3 fourths, then these are going to cancel. This, uh, 64 divided by 4, is uh, 16. So that's going to be... 16 times 3 is going to be 48. So we're going to get 48 equals r cubed. Now, this is an interesting little move here. So we're going to take the cube root of both sides. Now, this is pretty tricky, but we are in honors class, so we're going to see how we can handle this. So normally when we have square roots, we try to find perfect square factors. But since this is a cube root, you want to find a cube root that goes into there. Now, you probably, we don't have like that many cube roots in our arsenal that we just have memorized off the top of our head, but we have a couple. We have 8, uh, 2 cubed is 8, 3 cubed is 27, 4 cubed is 64, and 5 cubed is 125. So you should kind of have those memorized. So do any of those numbers go into 48? Well, yeah, 8 does. So the cube root of 8. So we divide that by 8, we get 6. So the cube root of 8 is 2. And the cube root of 6 is a decimal, so we leave that alone, and the radius would be in units, and we're done. All right? Okay. Now, uh, moving on to this next question. What is the radius of a sphere? Oh, no, I already got that. What is the ratio of the total volume of the spheres? to the total volume of the cube. Now, this is a little bit tricky, and so, because there's no numbers on here. So what you can do to make something easier when there's no numbers is you could pick your own number. Now for me, the number I want to use here is, I want to pick the radius of one of these spheres. Okay, from little ping pong balls or something. Um, I want the radius of that, and I want that to be one. So I think that'll make this problem the easiest. Now, if you think about it, what does that tell us about the cube if the radius of this sphere is 1? Okay, so we go across there. and So if you think about it, there should be four of those radii going across the cube. So that may mean that the cube would be 4, and then that would carry all the way around, right? And so we could write a little explanation of that just in case uh, we want to understand where that came from. So we could say we can pick, um, we can pick 
any number we want for the radius of the spheres. Now we could have used a variable. I could say that that's x, but I think that would make it uh, more complicated. Okay. So we chose r equals 1, and then the side of the cube is 4 times as big. So what I'm saying is, is you, it's a good idea to write uh, some stuff down, because maybe later if you look at your notes, you won't remember, um, you won't remember what we did. Okay, so we could have used a variable, but I think that would make it look more complicated, so I'm just going to choose one. Okay, so now if we look at one of those spheres, we're talking about the volume of the spheres, so that's going to be, now first of all, you have, well, we can actually do that, so 4 thirds pi r cubed for the volume of one sphere. Now the question is, how many spheres do we have now? You went, look, okay, one, two, so we could write these down. Um, Use a different color, so it's not. Uh, so one, two, three. Now, hopefully, you'd realize there'd be another right in the back underneath this one, because if there wasn't one down there, this one would fall down there. So that's going to be four, and then I'm going to go five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight uh, spheres in there. So we can multiply that by eight. So that's what we're going to have there. Now, if we take the volume of the cube, that's going to be uh, 4 cubed. Okay. So, I don't know if you can see what I wrote on the side over there. All right, so the one cube, that doesn't really matter. Um, what's going on here? We have four cubed, that's 64. So we can reduce that by eight and cancel that out. So now we're down to uh, four thirds pi in the numerator and eight in the denominator. So that's a complex fraction, a fraction and a fraction. So we want to multiply both of those by three. That'll cancel that out, and that'll take us to 4 pi over uh, 24. And 24, uh, we can reduce that to pi over 6. So a little bit more than 50%. Okay. And then we have a couple review questions here at the end. So I'm going to do those. Uh, in a separate group. All right, so on this format, we see the squared, so we should know that this is going to be a parabola. So we can switch this to y just to help us a little bit. And then the way I described solving this was to add 9 to both sides. So that makes it y plus 9 equals. Um, not a lot of people do it this way, so just keep that in mind. Um, but I like it because now it reminds us of point-slope form, which we started these notes with. We had a line in point-slope form. And so we can see that the point we have is negative 2, negative 9. And that point is this most important point here, probably. It's the vertex. So negative 2, negative 9. Now we could also just quickly look at the a value, what's being multiplied by x or x squared, and that's positive. And so just like when a slope of a line is positive, it means it goes up. A positive value there means that this opens up. So I've seen students write the correct answer down here, up, and then I've seen them graph a parabola going down. So that's a little awkward. Um, when you've written the word up, you should be thinking about the fact that your parabola should open up. So the vertex is at negative 2, negative 9. So that's going to be down here. Now immediately 
from that point, when you have the vertex, you should go to the axis of symmetry. And, and the axis of symmetry is a line. And a line should be an equation. x equals negative 2. So we want to... It's a dotted line because it's not really part of the graph. It's just helping us draw the graph. Okay. So the next kind of easy thing to do would be to kind of find the y-intercept. So if we find the y-intercept, um, that's when x equals 0. So we can put a 0 in for x. And we need to do a calculation there. So 0 plus 2 is 2. And uh, 2 squared is 4. And 4 times 2 is 8. And 8 minus 9 is negative 1. <clears throat> so we just plug it in. So now we have a couple things here. Now, a lot of teachers will have you put the uh, vertex right in the middle, but that seems a little redundant to me because um, we can reflect all the points over. So really, I'm actually going to start up here at negative 3, and you could even start at negative 2. Now, <clears throat> the reason that I came this way was because these numbers are, are smaller and nicer. I didn't want to put the negative 2 down here and then have negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6 because those numbers are all going to create more work for us in the problem. I want numbers closer to 0 um, whenever possible. So we already saw that that was negative 9 and we have that 0 equals negative 1. So 0, negative 1 is right here. So this kind of tells you plot the vertex first, that's what I did, then Graph the axis of symmetry, that's what I did, and then plot the y-intercept, and then it says reflect that. So all these points can be reflected over the axis of symmetry. So this is two points to the right, so we're going to go two points to the left. And now we already have three points on there, on the graph. Now, these two points should match up, so I'm just going to do this one, and then I, those numbers should be the same. So negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 minus 9 is a negative 7. So you can pause it if you need to think about that a little bit. And then because it reflects, that should be negative 7 as well. So that's going to be right here. Now, we also could think about this. The normal parabola, when a equals 1, it goes over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5. And if it's multiplied by a number, we multiply that pattern by the number. So the normal number is 1, 3, 5. So if we multiply by, by 2, then we would get 2, 6, 10. So this went up 2, and then this went up 6, and the next one is going to go up 10. So that should be right about here. And that's 3, and so I can go 3 to the left also. And we can check that by plugging a 1 in here. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 minus 9 is 9. So that's 9, and that's what I had from the pattern already. Okay, so when you graph this, um, I think the steeper ones are a little bit harder to, to draw well, but um, so you want to try to keep that vertex, eh, I messed that up a little bit, it just doesn't look good. Um, so yeah, I went over there too fast, I should have brought it because it gets steep. Anyway. You want to just, one of the things you want to make sure you do is keep this rounded down here and don't make it a sharp point because that's not uh, accurate there. Okay. So make sure you emphasize that. Okay. So let's um, wrap this up. Now I think I used green for the height. So remember the height is the distance between the bases and the bases are these two triangles. The bases are congruent um, polygons or in a cylinder uh, congruent circles. So there are two bases and our height is the distance between the bases. So that's going to be 13. So we have 13 centimeters. So usually in class we start the first couple tests with uh, giving you these things and then later on we expect you to just write it out and on your assignment you should have written these things out as well instead of just trying to put the answer down that looks a little bit uh, dubious 
So when we look at this, uh, you could use a Pythagorean theorem, but when the numbers are bigger, it's probably a Pythagorean triple. So if you look at this, this is 3 times 3, this is 3 times 4, and this will be 3 times 5. It's a 3, 4, 5 triangle that's been multiplied by 3. So that other side is going to be 15. So if we add these together, um, 15, that's 27, and 9 is 36. So that's going to be 36 centimeters. And so then we get to the lateral area. So remember, the lateral area for cylinders and prisms is just to multiply those two things together. So that's going to be 36 times 13. So 468 centimeters squared. Then we move over to the base area. The base area is a triangle, and that's going to be 1 half. Uh, the base times the height of the, and that's a dip, that's the base of the triangle. So 9 times 12, I would take half of 12 and get 6. 6 times 9 is uh, 54. So that's 54 centimeters squared. And then finally, the surface area. Remember the surface area is the lateral area plus 2 times the base area in prisms. So it's going to be 468 plus 2 times 54. So that's going to be 108 and if we add those together, that's going to be 16, carry the 1, 576 centimeters squared. All right. Now, if we move over here to the volume, uh, remember the volume is the base area times the height. So the base area was 54, and the height was... 13. So we need to take uh, 54 times 13. So that's going to be 12, uh, 15, and 1 is 16, and 0, 4, 5, 0. Carry the 1, 702 centimeters cubed. And it's about that time. Have a good day.